So was Britain right to enter the First World War? Well, as controversial as it is, let's look at what would have happened if the Germans had won the First World War rapidly with a, a savage conquest of Paris. And so these are the Bethmann Hollweg um, demands, the protocols of the 9th of September 1914. This was the German war aim. This is what they were going to ask for in return for peace. France would have to hand over the steel producing region of Breu and a coastal strip running from Dunkirk to Boulogne sur Mer to either Belgium or Germany. They would have to pay war indemnities of 10 billion Reichsmarks and further payments to veteran funds and pay off the entire German national debt. France would have to demolish all its border forts and it'd be banned from trade of any kind with the British and the British Empire. Now Belgium would either be annexed by the Germans or preferably be made into a vassal state. In that case, Eastern Belgium would be given to Germany and Antwerp would be given to the Netherlands. Germany would be given basin rights throughout Belgium. Luxembourg would be annexed. Poland, Estonia would be, well Poland would be a German, would be put under German sovereignty for all time. Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania would be handed over to be ruled by German princes. Finland and the Ukraine would also be, give, be created into, sovereign, into independent states to be led by German princes. All of these, Poland, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Finland and Ukraine, would then be forced to join Middle Europa, an economic association under German control. Now the Netherlands, which remember was neutral throughout the First World War, would then be forced to enter Middle Europa, the customs union and a full offensive and defensive military alliance with Germany in return for being given, being given Antwerp. Germany was to be having was to be allowed to have military basing rights across the Netherlands. Now in the Empire, the uh, European nations would be forced to hand over colonies to Germany to allow the Germans to create a continuous German colony across Central Africa by seizing colonies from France and the entire Belgian Empire. Then the British Empire, German colonial gains would be discussed in the near future. And so this was not the, the limit of their territorial extent. Germany would have achieved dominance of the globe. Europe would have been under the control of Germany, ruled as either a German empire or by German puppet states. The Germans were aiming for nothing short of world domination. And what kind of Germany would it be that would dominate the world? Well, let's look at the behaviour just before the war of the German Empire's behaviour. And let's look at their war in China. Now, this is the words of the German Kaiser to the German army before they sailed off to fight the boxers in China. You must know, my men, that you're about to meet a crafty, well-armed, cruel foe. Meet him and beat him. Give him no quarter. Take no prisoners. Kill him when he falls into your hands. Even... As a thousand years ago, the Huns under King Attila made such a name for themselves as still resounds in legends and fables, so may the name of the German resound through Chinese history a thousand years from now. When he gave this speech, the speech was then censored by his Chancellor, and then the Chancellor complained that he'd left out all the best bits. But the Chancellor could see that a call to take no prisoners and an idealisation of Attila the Hun was going to do Germany no favours in world diplomacy. The Germany arrived after the war was effectively over and order in China had been restored. They immediately started to loot and rape their way across China. The, their commander, Field Marshal Waldesi, ordered that the German army should shoot all headmen of every village for hundreds of miles around Peking. And then if we look at their behaviour in Africa, from 1904 to 1907, According to the United Nations, it was the first genocide of the 20th century. In 1904, the Herero people had rebelled against the German Empire. The Germans responded by poisoning desert wells and driving civilians into the desert to kill them by dehydration. Between 24,000, which was the German figure, and 100,000 people, which is the United Nations figure from 1980, were, were killed in this, uh, in this genocide. In October, the Namuagu people also rebelled with another 10,000 dead. The 1985 United Nations Whitaker Report said that it was a deliberate effort to exterminate the African peoples of Southwest Africa. 
General Trofer, the man in charge of the German army, said, I will destroy the African tribes with streams of blood. Only following the cleansing can, some, can something new emerge, which will remain. There was also links, of course, for this genocide to the later Holocaust. Uh, Eugen Fischer conducted medical experimentation on captured African rebels. He was only uh, only, re only to be re-employed by Nazi Germany when he was allowed to recontinue his research that he'd started on the Africans by then recontinuing it on the Jews under, in Nazi Germany. Fra the slaughter was organised by a Franz Ripper von Epp. In Nazi Germany he'd be responsible for the liquidation of the Jews in Bavaria. And so, yes, Imperial Germany is not Nazi Germany. But a lot of the people are the same. A lot of the people working in Imperial Germany will be rehired in Nazi Germany to conduct similar outrages on to humanity. And let's look at the German army's record in its occupation of Belgium. They left around 6,000 civilians dead and 25,000 houses destroyed. Ancient cathedrals and priceless libraries with, with irreplaceable books were burnt in the loot and the rape of Belgium. So could the war have been avoided? Well, in many ways, Germany had the wrong Kaiser. Now, Frederick III and Victoria ruled Germany from the 9th of March to the 15th of June, 1888. Now, most historians are convinced that if he had lived longer, then there, could have been no, there would have been no world wars or a militarised Germany. He wanted to create a constitutional monarchy and a liberal democratic system along British lines. The Chancellor's role would be weakened, and the cabinet made responsible to the Reichstag. He professed a hatred of warfare, but he died at the age of 56 of cancer of the larynx.